All right, guys, welcome to the Hungry for More call. I got Dream Curse on today. She's 22 years old. And in the last 10 days, she's went out and helped over 18 families. It is amazing. So Dream, welcome on. Thanks, Julius, for having me. You got it. You got it. So Dream, why don't you start off by telling us um, who introduced you to F uh, FFL and you know what, what really got you excited about what we were doing? Yeah, so um, just to start off, so during high school, I did have a part-time job and I was, you know, working at Lowe's, maybe making 10 to $12 an hour. And then after I graduated, I did serve in the military as an IT specialist in the Army um, for almost three years at Fort Bliss um, in El Paso. And then I was introduced in the industry um, through my husband, Alex, so at a practice company. And that's where we met Matt Seibert. And then they would have like weekly trainings and a time I wasn't very interested. So I was kind of like that person that was, you know, in the background and I was just looking and seeing what Alex was doing. And for the most part, um, you know, Matt would talk about the trainings and the Zoom meetings. And then, you know, he finally came up to me and said, you know, since you're in the background and you're listening and helping Alex, why don't you just get your license? So once I passed, I just remember Matt was so pumped up and he was telling me about FFL and that was it. Awesome. All right. Well, that, that's great. Well, Obviously, welcome to the best business ever, right? And uh, you guys, you know, th this business, it, there's so many people that we can help through this business, not only clients, but people looking to make a change in their career, looking to make some additional income, right? So one of the best ways to build an agency is through warm market. So obviously, Dream was introduced to this business through Alex, right? Which is uh, his warm market, right? So if you guys are looking to build an agency and you're not talking to people you already know and have a relationship with, you're doing your business a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice. So get out there, talk to people, introduce them to the opportunity. Because guys, everyone, if they want to, can benefit from Family First Life. Dream, do you genuinely believe that? Absolutely. Awesome. All right, cool. So let's talk about a few things. So I know today we're going to talk about seven things that you've learned in your time at FFL that's helped you change your business. Let's start out by talking about leads, right? So what have you learned from the lead standpoint, right? What, what leads are you working? What were you doing before? Yes, yeah, so the leads that I have been working, um, I've been doing one month mortgage, um, one month final expense, mailers. So all those are mailers with image in the CRM. And then I did start working some aged. And then at the beginning, I was not purchasing enough leads. So I would only spend between maybe $500 to $800 a week. And then I would look in the CRM every once in a while. And then I had no types of lead flows. So I bought leads whenever I wanted to. And then um, only working older leads. And I would say about three, four months or less. So now what I do differently is um, I spend about $1,500 to $2,000 a week. And I do purchase leads every day. So I portion out um, 25 mortgage and final expense mailer. So every day. And then I also purchase maybe a hundred um, age leads since they're about, I believe a dollar 50 or $2. And then now I do have three different lead flows that I do. Okay. So you made a big shift in your leads. What have you yes. noticed as a difference when you, when you made that shift in your lead purchases? What's the main yes, so thing that you've seen? Right. So after the lead purchase, um, I've noticed my productivity. So I can at least get in front of more families to work with and help with. You know, like I said in the beginning where I had no types of lead flow, I wasn't really purchasing enough. So the more that I spent, the more families I help. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So talk to us. I know we, you know, you, you and I talked a little bit and there's about seven different things that you have changed in your business. So mm -hmm. walk us through that. Obviously, number one was leads and, and your, your lead flow is different now. So guys, if, if you haven't captured that, you know, or, or you didn't write it down, write it down now because we're going to, it's very easy to forget. Our day goes by. A lot of things happen throughout our day, throughout our week. And if you're not writing these things down, it's going to be hard for you to retain and remember this information. So if she's doing something different than you're doing, all you have to do is literally copy and paste what others are doing to get the same type of results. So one is difference in lead flow and lead purchases. What, what's the next thing that you changed? I would also say dialing. Um, I was not dialing 
early enough. So I would actually come into the office just focusing on admin work. So meaning like personal work or anything that's not related to the business. And then I would start dialing at 9 a.m., maybe 10 a.m. And then um, I wasn't getting in front of enough people and then only dialing up to maybe 250 to 300 leads. And then so since I've been doing telesales, um, I do send out text messages between maybe 100 to 150. And that clues um, some follow up messages. My dialing ranges up to about 500 to 600 dials. And then I'm just making a non-negotiable to come to the office before 8 a.m. unless, um, you know, it's gym day or the other days. And then also um, being emotional and not having a tracker. Um, so I did not have any type of trackers or setting up or not treating my business like it's supposed to be. So, you know, not having any data to track my lead purchase, my follow-ups, um, any dials that I've made. And then also focusing just on my emotion and not taking the business uh, very personal. So I took things subjectively and not objectively. So I was being very emotional and not looking at the facts. And so um, tracking focuses on where your business stands. So if you are in the positive or negative, so I do track batches and monthly, weekly lead purchase, if I am in the profit or not. So follow up messages, appointments, either with clients, recruiting or dialing, um, not being emotional with the business. So money, um, having that business money to help actually grow it and not using it for personal reasons. And then I do remember having a conversation with you and Matt, and both of you told me you'll be in the same position if I don't purchase enough leads. And that was my biggest transition. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about that because you talked about two different things there, right? So number one, dialing, mm -hmm. right? So in the beginning, your dialing activity, you said you'd make about 200 or so dials, right? Yes. In a day. Okay. Now... And you also started with admin work is what it sounded like versus coming in and focusing on dials, right? So right. now you come in, what, what's, the, what's the latest you're going to start dialing? The latest I'll start dialing is 8 a.m. 8 a.m. All right. So what would you say to someone that walks into the office at 10 a.m.? Um, I would definitely tell them that they, you know, they have to get in early. Um, that's how your productivity, productivity goes down tremendously. Okay. If you're not working the business and not dialing enough, then... You're not working the business. I 100% I agree. So I'll tell you a quick story, Dream. You may have heard this. I've shared this with others in the past. But when I started, I worked from home because we didn't have any offices in Phoenix, right? And I would start my dials and my dial sessions wouldn't start till 10, sometimes 11, because I thought I can go to the gym. I can make myself breakfast. I can do my laundry. I can do all these things outside of dial. And then when I actually get on the phone, I'm so good that I can make it happen. Right. But what I failed to realize was the reason you're calling people at, at 8 a.m. is number one for yourself. Like you have to get into a rhythm. Sometimes it takes a few calls to actually get in rhythm, but two, you got to treat it like a job and you got to treat it like a business. Right. So if our business is making phone calls and we don't start to 11 or 10 or whatever the time is, that means our business actually hasn't started. We haven't actually opened up the doors for business till the time you start making those phone calls. So that's number one. Number two, people, right? Our clients, they're waking up. They're driving to work. They're getting their day start going, right? And the best time to get a hold of them is when they're getting their day going, not during the meat of their day. Because if, if they're, in, they're at work, they're, they're doing whatever they have to do for themselves, the chances of them answering their phone goes down. Would you agree? Absolutely. And so when you, you get on the phone and you're starting at 730, you're starting at eight at the latest, your, your contact rate will go up, which will allow you to book more appointments. So I 100% agree with that. And then, you know, being emotional, I think that's pretty normal for new people, right? I think most people in the beginning they want to be successful. They see, they see all, you know, the, the glitz and the glamour of what people post on social media, specifically about FFL, but they don't see the hard work. They don't see what it takes to actually get there. They don't see that treating this like a business will remove the emotion out. And I think one of the things you said was you started tracking stuff, right? You started tracking your activity, right? 
Absolutely. And for you guys that are on this call or watching a replay, if you're feeling emotional, it's probably because you're not tracking your, your data, right? So when you started tracking things, what was the biggest shift that you saw, Dream? Yeah, so after tracking, um, my productivity did come up. And then um, just as far as my profit, that also went up as well. Okay, so your, your product, why do you think your productivity went up when you started tracking things? Um, just definitely getting um, also just enough people. Like I said, where those follow-ups come in, I can see exactly where I need to be. Also, just where my leads are as well. Okay. So you're actually able to see the numbers, right? I mean, at the end of the yes. day, you're able to see the data, right? And, and I've had this conversation with multiple agents as they're getting into this business is if you want to treat it like a business, then you have to operate like a business, right? When's the last time you worked at a business and they didn't show you data? Exactly. Never, right? Every job you've ever had, everywhere you always go, they're going to say, here are your statistics, here are are your numbers. Here is how you are performing, right? Like I worked in the call center business. I, I was a supervisor and got into management and all that. And when I had a team of people, I would say, okay, here's how our team is performing. Hey, Bob, here's how you're doing. Hey, John, here's, here's how you're doing. Hey, Mary, here's how you're doing. And now I can, I can show everybody what their areas of opportunity are. What's different here is you're going from an employee mindset for most of us to being an entrepreneur. And so now you're actually having to go get the data or track the data yourself and then be able to analyze it, right? And so you doing that has allowed you to step up your game because now you're actually treating your, your work like a business. And so I'm proud Absolutely. of you for doing that. All right, so we got through three. What's number four? What's another thing that you've changed to help increase your sales? Um, I also have changed um, comparing myself to others. Um, I was always comparing myself, um, like Stan to Amy J as well. Like, how are they helping all these families in a week? And I might have one or two appointments here and there. Um, I've had negative self-talk. I was saying to myself, am I in the right business? Um, I've always, you know, thought of quitting. I had no faith. And then just me changing it, um, just believing that I can do it. Having that faith, you know, don't take it personal. There is room for improvement and it takes time. So it's a process and everyone's situation is different. Um, my, another point was um, having a set schedule. So I also had no type of schedule. I was um, trying to work the business at just any time I wanted to. So I now use Google Calendar. So I get up, I go to the office every day, including the weekends. And then I text every day and then having to reach out to people to get in front of more people. And then I also learned that, you know, your schedule has to be your boss. And if you don't have a schedule or routine, you're a playing businessman. Okay. Playing businessman. Ooh, I like that. You're playing like you're a businessman, but you're not actually a businessman. That's yes. good. That's so, so comparing to others, right? And um, wh why, do you think you, why do you think you did that, right? I mean, you're comparing yourself to others, right? You're comparing to the people that are producing mm -hmm. at a high level. But when you look back and you think about it, why do you think you were doing that? Um, I truly believe it was just based on belief and the amount of maybe possibly the money that I have. I mean, I only started out small, which is fine. Um, however, that was, you know, truly hurting my business because I would see everybody doing bigger things. And I told myself, well, maybe I can't do it. But once I changed that and, you know, just having a consistency, I can truly change that. So I think one of the key things you said in that is the belief, right? And I think a lot of times, and I, I'll talk for myself, Dream, so... I've done this, right? And I think a lot of people fall into this trap. Um, and when you believe that you can do what others are doing, it's almost natural to kind of compare yourself, right? It's, Absolutely. hey, I can do what Stan does. Hey, I can do what Matt does. Hey, I can do what Julius, whoever it is, right? But because you see yourself in that light, you have belief, you have confidence in your ability and because you have confidence in your ability, you start to say, well, why am I not like this person? Why am I not doing as much as this person? Which it happens, right? But I think that also pushes you to find a way to get better. 
but it could also slow you down at the same time, right? Because now if you're, if you're constantly looking at the person to your left, the person to your right, and not focusing on yourself, because one of the things, so when, when you, how did you stop comparing yourself to others to, to actually make the change? Like, what was that shift? What did that look like? Um, I just really also still had to, um, you know, still look at the numbers and then also just reaching out to leadership of how to get to the next level. And that's what really helped me stop comparing myself because like I said, everyone's situation is different. Um, even though you might not have, you know, what they have, it's okay. Everyone is a process. So what I hear you really say is you stopped looking at others and you started looking at yourself. Right. Yes. You had to have an outsider perspective. Your leaders give you some open and honest feedback and you were vulnerable to them. Right. Hey, what can yes. I do better? Hey, how do I do this? Right. You said um, that you were you were told to get more leads so that way you can change your situation. Right. So these are these are things that are not comfortable for most people. Right. Guys, let's face it. It's not easy to say I need help. And I'll be the first to say that I'm never, I've never been this big person of just like, Hey, help me. I need help because I think I can figure it out. I, and it sounds like, you know, you probably deal with that too, which is, I think a very natural human element. But the moment that we step outside of ourselves and realize like, Hey, all the best, all the leaders in any space, in any business, they all have a coach. They all have a mentor. They all got to where they are not through trial and error by themselves. Most people, most people got there because someone showed them away. They, they, they followed a path. Right. And I think that's very, um, that says a lot about who you are dream because you were able to, to really look in the mirror and ask for help and say, Hey, I know I'm not doing what I need to do. What can I do to do different? What, what can I do to, to, to produce a different result? And you ask for help. And when you ask for that help and you actually accept the feedback as something that will help drive you forward and you execute on it, you start to see those results. So that that's big. And then uh, the next thing you talked about, I'm assuming was setting schedule number five. Yes. Okay. So setting a schedule. So you didn't have a schedule before or were you just, what, what was that like? Like, did you just, you know, what, yeah, I had what did no you, schedule at all. Okay. So you had no schedule. Were you just kind of going and coming as you wanted to go or what? Yes. Yes, I was. All right. So now you have a schedule. Now, you know, when you're starting, when you're ending all that stuff. Right. So, um, okay. Okay. So talk to us a little more. You got some more things in there that, that you said you learned. So what are some other thing? What are the other two things you learned? Yes. So, um, I was also focusing on, um, selling clients and not serving them. Um, so taking no as their final answer. So I wasn't really being assertive enough, um, not asking the right questions. So even if they're not interested, okay, I understand what exactly are you not interested in? And, you know, just not focusing on, you know, why they're, you know, not under, you know, understanding it or not understanding the product or not interested. And then I wasn't um, focusing on their why as much. So I wasn't acknowledging their concerns. And I would always talk over them. I would talk too much and not listen to what the clients were saying, like, okay, are we going to do this or not? And so what changed that for me was um, just digging in deeper to their why, and understanding why this is important to them. Oh, Julius, that's awesome that you see the value of why you want to protect your daughter and not leave them with financial burden. So I was understanding more and then just communicating with that client and show the value of why this is important for them and their family. And then also just taking guidance and um, versus doing it on my own. So I'm always thinking of what I should do, um, not asking any questions to leadership, and I, th- and I just thought I-, I could do this on my own and not ask for help. So, you know, if you want to get the help that you need to get to the next level, I have to reach out to leadership and I need to get the training in order to succeed. Okay. So serving instead of selling. And I think some of the things you said in there is big, right? It's finding the why, right? I, I spoke with an agent the other day and uh, she came in and she's like, I'm struggling. Um, I'm having trouble 
writing policies and having trouble helping people. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what is, what does your appointment look like? Right. What is, what is it? Show me, let's role play. And she basically walked in and told me, Hey, um, so it looks like you requested 25,000 in coverage. Let's see what we can do more or less and got right into financial inventory and, and started quoting options. And I'm like, wait a minute, what is that doing? Like, where's the value, right? Like they can do that on the internet, right? They, right. they don't need you to come to their house or on the phone to do that when they can do that by themselves. I go, what, are you finding out what the purpose is? Who are they looking to protect, right? So guys, for, for you, if you're having some trouble in closing your appointments, right? The number one thing you got to remember is it's always about the why. It's always about serving. So Dream, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you've learned that lesson because at the end of the day, here's how you find the why, right? You start with why did they request this? Why did they send in this request? Okay. And then you said a few things also, Dream. You said you asked clarifying questions, right? And that could be in, in different ways, right? So if they sent in the request, okay, why did you send in the request? Well, I wanted to make sure I had something to not be a burden on my family. Okay, great. If something happened to you yesterday, who would be the beneficiary? Who would be the one picking up the pieces? My daughter, Joan, whatever, right? Okay, your daughter. Okay, so is she financially in a place where she can cover all this? No, she's not. Okay, so is that going to be pretty tough on her? Right now, you're really nailing it down, right? And because Absolutely. what you're doing by asking follow-up and clarifying questions is painting the picture, right? For you to understand the problem, but also for the client to understand the problem, right? Because I think a lot right. of times, and, and Dream, keep me honest here, I think a lot of times what happens is Clients are filling out this request. Yeah, they want a number, right? They want to know the option, but they're not focused on the problem. And when we're coming in and we're only focused on the problem, and the problem is if you pass, your daughter screwed, for lack of better words, and they said it versus me telling them, now they've, they've understood that the problem is, is bigger than just the request, right? Exactly. And so now you're providing a solution, right? Okay. So, um, how did you get to that point? What, what really shifted for you to really tweak that? Because I, I think for some people they get it right away and, and they're focused on serving while other people, it, it takes them a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like I said, just, um, reaching out and just trying to understand why you're there. Um, I've also, try to, you know, even go back to like the boot camps as well to see how exactly am I going to help these clients and why they actually want the, you know, the coverage and what they're actually looking for. So it's very important. And then just that shift was, it did take me a time because like I said, it's a process, but for me to actually understand and really dig deep into, you know, why they wanted it. Got it. And then was your last one leadership? Yes. So guidance versus, you know, doing it on my own. Yes. Okay. So it kind of goes back to the other thing, right? So it's, you know, some of these things all play together, right? So some of them, uh, they all kind of co-mingle. And so it, it kind of goes back to what I'm talking about, getting guidance, getting support when you need to. So looking back, right? So how long have you been here now, Dream? I've been here for about seven months. All right. About seven months, right? There's people on here have been here for 30, 60 days, Maybe they're brand new, just getting contracted. So if they're brand new, and let's say you were brand new, let's rewind, let's take what you've learned at this point, and you're starting over, what, what would you do different from day one? Um, definitely from day one, I would say it's very, very crucial to reach out and have consistent communication with your leadership. So not reaching out for uh, mentorship and trying to figure it out on your own, I found just, just doesn't work. Um, so the leadership that you work with, they are there for a reason just to help you guide through a working process. And it is very important to just implement what your leadership says, because there's always room for improvement. And that's by, you know, learning different skill sets that will help you in appointments, fighting for your client, you know, just knowing a baseline to the products that we have, 
guiding people, um, you know, developing an entrepreneur mindset. And then also, you know, just working with Matt as well. I can go to him and we can just sit down and look at my schedule or tracker just to see what needs to be changed. And if I need a course correction, if I get off track. So, you know, just it doesn't matter what time of day it is. You have to reach out. Okay. Awesome. So, guys, I mean, anyone can do this. It's really up to you right now you have the support you have the tools you have all the resources it's a matter of execution implementation mm -hmm. and the constant i call it process improvement right because at the end of the day we're improving something in our business whether it's the words we say it's the tools we create for ourselves um and, and you know in the beginning it's finding your voice finding your flow finding your rhythm and until you get to that point it, it can be a little bit of a, a challenge and there's nothing wrong with that, right? This isn't meant to be easy, right? But once you get through those challenges, it's going to be very rewarding. Dream. So you, you've helped 18 families in the last 10 days. Financially speaking, how rewarding has that been? It's been amazing. Pretty nice, huh? Changing. Yes, absolutely. All right. Ha did you ever think to yourself you can make that type of money at your age in that short of a time window? No, not at all. It's pretty wild. The business isn't it? definitely has, yes, it has completely changed everything for me. Tell us more. Like, what does it actually change, right? So, give us an idea of what it's changed for you and your family. Yes. So um, just for me and my family, I can, um, well, what I'm working on right now is my husband, he is working. So this for me to be consistent, I can actually try to get him out of his situation so he can also work the business as well. Um, I've never had this much amount of money before. Like I said, I was working at Lowe's. I mean, it was just very, very minimal, but it has completely changed everything. I know you're not trying to retire your husband and he's too young for that. <laughs> no, but if it, if it can happen, then it will. Hey, nothing wrong with that. So guys, I, I mean, understand that you're in a position, you're number one, you're in a vehicle. Okay. Keep in mind this, you're in a vehicle where we're offering services to people where you don't actually own anything. Okay. I saw this the other day and, and we're going to make an image about this. And I wanted to share this with you guys. I'm going to give you guys some perspective real quick. And we're going to put this up. I saw this online. You guys may have seen this on, on uh, Instagram or social media, right? So Amazon has almost no stores. Uber has almost no cars. Facebook creates no content. Alibaba has no inventory. Airbnb owns no real estate. Netflix is not a TV channel. Tinder requires no marriage. I don't know why they threw that one in there, but uh, Bitcoin <laughs> has no physical coins, right? So the internet is changing the game. And for Family First Life, we don't offer our own insurance. We actually don't even have, we don't even need to have a physical office if we don't want to, to actually have an agency, right? So you actually own something without actually having anything tangible, which is pretty insane if you think about the type of business we're in. And so guys, we're in the best vehicle in America today. We're in an opportunity where in a day you can make multiple thousands of dollars if you just put your head down, do the work, go through the challenges that you you are going through. Everyone has their own challenges. You, you can't get through them. You can't get to where you want to go without going through whatever personal challenge you have to go through. Okay. Dream had hers. I have mine. Some people have parallels. Some people have completely different stories and different journeys. And that's okay. But are you willing to pay the price to go to where you want to go, right? Whether that's being a top producer, whether that's building a large agency, whatever the case may be, but we all have a price to pay. And so I leave you guys with this. Dream, can anyone do the things that you did to change their business? Absolutely. Right? And um, is there, did you come into this business with any unique talent, any unique experience or anything that would give you a leg up on anyone else? No. No. So guys, I, I, I share this with you. 
most of us, including myself, have a similar background to dream, right? And I say that meaning we've all had jobs. We've all had some sort of experience. There's some transferable skills. Maybe it's working with people and customer service or sales, whatever the case may be. But none of us were born life insurance agents. <laughs> Most of us did not have a business before here. And we can learn everything we need to know to be successful at helping other clients and other families and make the income we want. But it's up to you. It's up to me. And so you have to ask yourself, and I would recommend you do that after we're done here. Are you where you want to be? Most people, the answer is going to be no. And if the answer is no, what do you need to change? What do you need to do different? And how do you get there? And if you don't know the answer, that's okay. But guess what? There's a ton of people here who can give you that answer, whether it's myself, some of the other managers on our team, or if we look across the company, there's multiple people across the company that have found success here. So guys, I, I, want, I want this for you guys, but I can't want it more than you want it for yourselves. Dream, I'm so happy that you are starting to turn this corner and really producing at a high level. Do you foresee this changing and going down in any way? No. Which way you see it going? Uh, Only way. up. We're going all the way up, right? So if she can do it, you can too. The question is, are you going to do it? Are you going to pay that price? Are you going to do what's necessary to take yourself to the next level? And if, if you don't know how to get there, reach out, hit me up, message me, text me, reach out to your manager, whoever it is. But guys, there is enough for everybody to go around. And I hope you get the piece that you want. You get to choose how big a piece of the pie you want, right? If, if, if this is a big old pizza pie, you want the whole thing or you want just a slice? I love me some pizza. So I, I, I'd want the whole thing. I'd probably be full, but probably a bad analogy. You guys get it. Matt loves him some pizza too, obviously. <laughs> but the, the goal of this, guys, is look, we can all do this and we do it collectively as a team. And that's the fun part about this. You're not, you're in this business for yourself, but you're not by yourself. You have a bunch of people here that can help you guys. I have your back dream blessed to be in business with you. Proud to be in business with you and uh, look forward to seeing more of your growth guys. Let's continue to go out there, serve families. Obviously today is dial day. Let's go out there and help a bunch of families set a bunch of appointments and let's make an impact in our communities till next time. See you later.